I got an IEP for my son. I don't always know what to ask in those meetings. There's like five people in front of you. There are things that happen all the time on a school campus. Oftentimes parents feel the uh, depth of distance between a teacher and themselves or an administrator and themselves. Y nomás es muy importante uh, saberse comunicar y relacionarse con, con los maestros y con el sistema escolar. Question formulation technique. We're going to practice it. We're going to go through the sequence. We're going to go through all of the steps. And we're going to work together to get that done so you have a strong sense of how to do this. And you're going to see how simple it is and how powerful it is as well. You've been to workshops where people in front of you stand and they're the expert. Well, that's not happening tonight, folks, because you're going to be the experts. In our time together, you're going to be doing most of the thinking and most of the working. There are some rules about producing questions. You're going to ask as many questions as you can. Do not stop to judge, discuss, or answer any of the questions. Write down every question exactly as it was stated and change any statements into questions. What might be difficult about following these rules? Your question focus this evening is, your child might be held back in the same grade for one more year. Three minutes, please. Will there be a different teacher? I mean, what could you do to prevent it? When did they realize that this might be an option? Like, this might happen? Can my child move ahead to the next grade with supports or strategies? The question focus is your child's school environment. Do all the kids <laughs> have recess at the same time? Do you have an anti-bullying policy? Does everyone get the same work? Review real quick the difference between open and closed-ended questions. If your question can be answered in one or two words, yes, no, blue, it's probably a closed-ended question. We also have open-ended questions that require more explanation. You're not going back and judging the question. You're going back and writing C if it's closed-ended and O if it's open-ended. This could even be a closed question too. Will they have the same teacher? Will it help? Closed. You have your questions labeled as open or closed. Tell me some um, advantages of a closed-ended question. What are some disadvantages of a closed-ended question? What the advantages of asking open-ended questions would be. What would then be some disadvantages of asking those open-ended questions? So, would you please go through your list and Take one open-ended question, change it to a closed, and take one closed-ended question and change it to an open, please. We could change what data do you have and say, do you have data to support this? And that would change it to a closed. So now you're gonna look over your list of questions and you're gonna choose the three questions that you consider the most important. But be prepared to share why you made these a priority. I think this is a pretty important one. How many kids Why? are in your class? Because I think it determines how much attention your kid gets individualized. Why might the child be held back? What skills are they lacking? What can we do to prevent that from happening? What I would like you to do now, please, is discuss at your tables um, why you chose those three as your priority questions and where are they 
in your sequence? Are they number two, are they number five, or are they number one? Beginning, middle, and end. I think the most important when you consider, if you look at a whole child. What's been done to help our child so they're not in this predicament? So, what the problem is, Yep. what's been done to try to alleviate it, and then what can we do as a group? I feel like we, we started talking like a team until we were down here. Yeah. Like up here it was very, you know, what can I do? Do I have a choice? Is it going to help? And then we get down here and all of a sudden it was like, all right, we've got a problem. Now let's start talking like a team. Right. We're now going to develop a mini action plan. We're going to make a T-chart. On the left side of the T, write the word information. And on the right side, write the word tasks. We're going to take some time right now and we're going to share with a different group. Uh, what happens when uh, my child gets sick at school? Okay, the information that we need is uh, that parents would need is, um, is there a doctor or nurse um, that comes to see him when he's sick? Um, and also, do, can they, he get medicine? Is the people that are giving the doctor, nurse, or whoever gives him medicine? And how do, how do we obtain that information? Um, asking the office, or the nurse, or the teacher. It's okay to go into anything, a meeting, a discussion, kind of with an idea of the information that I'm looking for. I'm try not to go totally on emotion, but make sure that you go through and um, ask those questions before you walk in. That both open and closed questions are good questions depending on what you're looking for. Some people react with emotions, so instead of that, just kind of listen and assess the situation. Yo pienso que ninguna pregunta es simple para nosotras por la tranquilidad de, de, la, de la mamá y que tu niño esté con el mejor bienestar en la escuela. You can not only use it, I mean, in this setting, in your child's education, but in like all aspects of, of my life. Oftentimes parents feel the uh, depth of distance between a teacher and themselves or an administrator and themselves. And w one thing that we want to do is to, to shrink that, that depth between us, the walls, and, or lower those walls between us. And I feel like the work that we did here tonight helps parents to do exactly that. It empowers them and then to come ready, set to go and to feel much more confident in, in working with us. We cycle parents through these open houses and these parent conferences. You literally have 15 minutes. You better use it right, you know? So if you have, as a parent, some mental preparation to come in to sit down and be prepared some real, to really get at what you want, you're in great shape. This was a nice beginning piece to really have this the relationship building take off. I think if you can ask good questions, then then you, you're more likely to get services, you're more likely to get responses that actually help you make a difference in your child's education and, and life. Yo pienso que es importante para los padres uh, saber hacer las preguntas correctas porque estamos hablando de la educación de nuestros hijos, de, del futuro de nuestros hijos. I got an IEP for my son, um, both of them, and now that I have some more information about asking questions, um, I think I don't always know what to ask in those meetings. There's like five people in front of you. Now I feel more empowered um, to ask um, more detailed questions.